Hello everyone, and this is Enderalis once again speaking. I'm telling you about this new deck that I've came up. Just cue the music. Alright, so what we're going to be using is a deck I made up called Mighty Morphin Tower Shark. And much to your, 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 uh, your glee, it is very much based off of my childhood, uh, the Power Rangers, amongst other things, Kamen Rider. And it's fully based around charlotte being a power ranger rising up and then destroying the enemy but it has many other ways of uh winning and i actually used it this thursday tournament to uh win a couple of games actually uh it did really well against feasting which i assume was a combination of various uh bits and pieces i had in there to make it work so just like anything we have charlotte which is our ruler now charlotte has the ability to uh pay one blue and of course she has energized to uh discard a card and rest target resonator so what this ends up do doing is that it stops the opponent from using any abilities such as will abilities or tap abilities or attacking you on your turn or their turn so for example a good way of using it would be if you know your opponent just tapped out and they played a sacred elf you can, in response, before their turn ends, especially if you go second, uh, tap their Sacred Elf. And what that does is that stalls them out of a turn of having that Sacred Elf to either Wall of Wind you or any other one drop uh, ability for your turn by just giving up your token. Now, of course, that does make it where you get into a situation where not only are you a card down, but you lose your 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 token but if you get a uh, blue or a green or whatever you need anyways it'll be fine uh, and sometimes i can just help you out because they just don't cancel out a card you have because you can't pay the extra one for it because you pay two um and the card you you flip that over and her j ruler side has the ability to um when she comes in you draw a number of cards equal to five minus the cards you have in your hand. So if you have no cards in your hand, you draw five. If you have one, you draw four. For every card you draw, you gain 100 life. So what she passively does is from this point on, you will gain 100 life for every time you draw a card. And that'll keep you out of those situations where you go against Mars decks or whatever, where they like to burn you out. And as long as they put you to 2,000 health, they think they have the game. You get to stop that and you cause uh, their whole little thing to start off. So what she also does is that she has the ability to pay a blue and a colorless and you can return target resonator back to their owner's hand. Now the thing about this is a, is a pay ability, activate ability effectively and it's on your J ruler. Uh, because she can't be attacked as well on her J ruler side, you can always use her for getting stones you can use her to attack and know that she can't get attacked back afterwards she only has 400 attack and 1200 defense but there's there's combinations that we'll talk about later that makes that fine now you notice on both sides uh they have a discard a card and then do an effect well the card you're going to be discarding is charlotte's protector charlotte's protector has the ability that says when it's discarded from your hand you draw a card now this works out perfectly because not only is a pay one or two drop a card, it rewards you with another draw. So it causes you to have the ability to stop them from aggroing you or attacking you or even doing any combo and drawing the card to cycle your deck faster, which also because of her J ruler side gives you life. So you can do that in response to the opponent doing something and to make sure you get that 100 extra life you need not to die or just to stack up life enough that you have this nice cushion that they can't kill you off with. Uh, the normal combination along with Charlotte's Protector being used to be thrown away purposely uh, is to have Charlotte's Transformation Water Magic or Water Transformation Magic. Um, and what this does is it turns creatures into 4-4 bears without any abilities. The reason this is so good is because not only does it turn you into a bear, which currently there is no bear creatures, so it, it gets rid of that creature's uh, subtype, so they're not a knight, they're not a, you know, four sacred beasts or anything, they're just a bear. It makes them a 4-4, four, four, 
which is funnily enough what her attack is so if she swings into a little die and it gets rid of all their abilities so they can't proc any abilities like death touch which is effectively what creature from chaos has or tap abilities um that that they could use in response to that you effectively get rid of that first um the thing is it does not cancel abilities so if they in response do tap it or uh, do any activate ability before that and they still technically count towards the effect uh they'll get it but if on the chase the bear magic resolves it may make that move anyways now it combos well with the other card we have in the deck so that's not that's our transformation magic so just like how Rita was like make my minions grow you make them small again um along with that they have we have artemis bows and artemis bows is the amazing combination that if you didn't know almost every charlotte has because it's a regalia so it costs zero which means if you ever get one in your hand you can drop it and be perfectly fine uh it has the ability to come in with two counters it gives your j ruler target attack which a lot of people actually forget about and if you tap it it does 400 damage to target j ruler uh blocker blocking or attacking j ruler so you can use these to actually kill off zeros or uh, other rulers that that are pretty strong but have like low defense or can only be hurt with non-battle damage you can use this to, to kill them off you can use this to kill off any attacking creature by transforming them into a bear and then popping the artemis bow it's a very good combination and it has another ability which is you can pop uh two off of it and it'll kill off a addition resonator which are ones specifically that attach to resonators so you get rid of those and if you have arla you can do some other things but you don't have that so you don't care uh the next two cards are actually uh well they're cards that i put in here but i could have changed out so we have ancient heartfelt uh heartfelt my fire which uh, i have four of those and of course that makes it where uh if you turn things into bears notice all the bear usage charlotte usage uh they have exactly 400 so you pop them for 400 and they're dead now of course if i wanted to take apart one of my other decks i would instead put in lightning strikes because lightning strike does 500 so just in case they have a counter on them because counters do not go away or they want to bump it by another 100 just to keep it alive uh this kills them what it also does is gives you abilities to strike them directly for 500 damage to end up getting quick wins in. So yeah, if you want, if you can, trade out lightning strikes, but Ancient Heartfield Fires are at least really good for killing off resonators and rulers. Uh, and if you want a side deck, maybe a Mars or something, you can always change those up and then use that for him. The other cards I put in there are our Green Rangers, which is Melfi, Sorceress of the Holy Winds, uh, and she's there. I actually took her out of the wound condets to make this deck again. I'll put them back in. Uh, I, I put four of her. She is there to cause mana ramp to not only stop opponents from doing big rushes because she can now target the J resonator, like I said, and make them not do any damage, but she gives you every single color. And that works out really well because you are going to have a lot of stones in this deck you're gonna have a lot of colors you are a power ranger and thus power charlotte must have all the colors you may not use every color in the deck but you're gonna use every color for something and that something is red boy <laughs> yep you can't escape not having a red boy this color deck will have all five colors and even though it don't use all five colors red boy generates more boom for every color you have and because of a combination of melfi's and you being blue being able to draw cars and then getting more stones you'll be fine because you'll have a lot of dual stones you have some single stones in here too but you have a lot of dual stones so you'll have every color and the reason melfi is really good with this deck and that's why i have four of her with the red boys is that you and you only have two red boys is that you can get in melfi or other cards with this other card known as last drop last drop makes it where you can get any two costs which you are going to have a lot in this deck for a green and a colorless or you can get back a thousand life what you're going to usually use it for is to get back 
either a creature such as uh, later on Zero's familiar or a Melfi, you'll flash in the Melfi or anything like that uh, when you don't have the proper will to really get them in with what you want or if you use your Melfi to chump block while also negating someone's damage and then you pop her back in with last drop what it ends up doing because she still comes in the field once more you can use her uh, have her come out pick a J resonator they don't do damage block something that does do damage have her die have them attack again uh, last drop her from the graveyard back into play rested she picks another J resonator that one doesn't do damage so with one Melfi you were able to negate three opponents worth of damage and then since you did it on that opponent's turn when your turn comes back around you can untap her and now you have ramp for your turn again you never actually lost her so I have two last drops last drop also allows you to pay green in the colors like I said for anything that isn't green in the colorless or too white or anything like that this goes into our uh, our effective uh, standby which is uh, he's not a white ranger but he's a familiar zero's familiar and what zero's familiar does is it gives your your ruler barrier which means that for them to kill your power charlotte now who's going to be smacking for all of the damage later they have to kill this off and with a combination of that being there and last drop you can effectively make it where they have to kill this thing twice before they can do something like black moon beam or anything like that because they have to let all these things resolve first before they can hit you and then destroy the chase which is fine so you can do that if you get both of them great now you get you know they'll block with one you kill one off you get the other one flash it back in and now they can't they can't kill kill off your charlotte uh, without attacking her they can't even target her so she just swings and the only thing they can do is hope to block and if they block of course you'll just get rid of them or rest them in response and they can't block uh, then we go on to the other two I have which is uh, the uh, Grim which is the king of fairy tales Grim King of fairy tales and he gives you the the one two punch combo that you're gonna start building later to make your ruler destroy people people forget but Charlotte is a human and Grim gives force. Force is you roll a dice and you give it to your attack and defense. Since she is a human and it works on humans and fairy tales, uh, the D6 will apply to her because it's J rulers. Uh, it's J resonators, by the way. And with with that, she gets stronger. And when she gets stronger and she swings, she does a lot of damage to things. And since she can only be blocked, and you can almost always make sure when she flips to her ruler side. Uh, J ruler side and just get rid of the card that's in front of her it pretty much guarantees that you're gonna get the damage in there's not much they can do about it and since it's a force ability that you can do once per round I have two of them so I can either double pump on one round or have one and then pump on the other so that I always have some ability to pump and block or attack with them and then there's nothing you can do about it. the next card we're gonna have is some more ramp and there's three magic stone analysis now in this deck you're gonna have simple stones i have regular stones in the deck and you're gonna use magic stone analysis to get the stones that you need because you'll know the rest of them will be dual stones that you can get other colors you want a lot of your dual stones are blue so uh you'll, you'll be fine you'll get water a lot of them are water in some way shape or form not all of them are but a lot of them are so you'll get your water you'll be able to get regular water stones and if you're really really lucky it's possible for you to get a magic stone analysis one or two of them and then just get a whole bunch of green stones to keep doing the magic stone analysis to get all the stones you need so then you you, you can just throw your cards at people and magic stone analysis is like your 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 equipment with power rangers you know that's how they get stronger their changer that's how they get get much much stronger than they need to get um, now coupled with the Grim from before is I have two Pandoras, uh, Pandora girl on the box and Pandora of course is to make any force ability, uh, exceed greatness, get much stronger. What she does is whenever she's in there and you do a force ability, uh, she increases the number by one and she's a uh, two white. So you can get her with last drop. If you want to drop her with 
Charlotte's discard ability on purpose, rest their resonator, next turn, pop in her with last drop, or on that turn, last drop her in, she's now tapped, but she's also a human, and she also is too light, so you don't have to pay too light for her, you pay the green and something, and now you have her on the field, she makes it where it just goes up by one. So you get any Grim Force ability, it pops it by one. So now your Charlotte got stronger. She's a human. She swings for whatever amounts of damage. And that couples well with the two Dreams of Flight we have. And Dreams of Flight is a common that shouldn't be common. Uh, Dreams of Flight gives you fly and then gives you force. So you have Pandora, you have Grim, you have, uh, and then Dreams of Flight on your Charlotte. Your Charlotte rolls like six dice for her or whatever. She's pumped and then you can just OTK someone with that. It's so funny because it, it, you know, this 400 damage, you know, resonator all of a sudden just, <laughs> she gets the, the Power Ranger sword and she just cuts them in half and they're like, ah, oh, I was at 4,000 though. Uh, it's so funny. Now this goes into another thing that I have along with all that other stuff that buff fairy tales and humans and stuff. It's called Light Palace, uh, so Fairy Tale Kingdom Light Palace. What it does is not only does it draw, make you draw more, which cycles through your deck faster because you know charlotte makes you cycle through your deck as well it gives all humans and fairy tales the ability that at the end of your turn you can recover them back after they do whatever so you can tap you know charlotte for a stone and then recover her back so she can block next turn or you can attack with her or attack with any of your other fairy tales or humans get the huge bonuses and then they all be able to block next turn it's really silly and that's why i put it in there and because it also is a draw engine it gives you the ability to get through your deck you can draw into another one get another one draw that one too and then draw to uh you know a charlotte's uh, protector and be able to pop them to then draw again and remember every time you draw after this point you're getting help uh on top of that you go into this other ability which is why i put it in here and it's called flash of the demon sword flash of the demon sword mixed with the fact that you can both remnant and use uh, dreams of flight have pandora out have grim out or whatever it makes it where you get a three for one it's possible for you to swing with charlotte after she's pumped up flash flash of the demon sword make it where someone cannot block because that's his base ability and then also kill that creature outright so one of their biggest threats their biggest blockers who could possibly hurt your charlotte you kill them you keep going and then anything's in the way you either get rid of or it's rested or you purposely just destroy it and that's assuming it doesn't have flying and that's their only flying not only did you kill their flying off you got a free hit in for god knows how much damage i mean you rolled anywhere from three to six d6 uh, that's 28 possible damage average that's a lot of damage i can't i don't even know what to do about that this is crazy not 28 it's 21 more um but yeah that's that's where that whole combination comes in it works really well and it it, it does it's it's a nice standby card people generally think a standby card will be like justice sword or something like that but like you know the, this this makes it where they can't block and they get punished for not being able to block it's so good it works really well that's why i have it in the deck uh along with that we have our blue ranger who is uh captain hook he pops in everyone knows what he does he costs five he pops two stones or he pops two resonators uh with charlotte you can use him pop him in then send him back to your hand by discarding the car and be able to pop him out later and just keep getting rid of the opponent's stones or keep getting rid of the resonators and just smashing people as he goes through and he's a thousand thousand so he's not big he's a fairy tale as well so if you keep him out on the field you can use grim to power him up and he can smash people and since you use blue anyways it works out uh along with that we have our zordon or our base a place known as altea uh, palace of dark magics it's a giant flying fortress it costs like eight and it's so expensive you're thinking p renderalis why would you do that it costs too much well i'll tell you why you do it because it has the ability to make chance and people forget this chance the first chant you cast every turn costs zero now if you have eight you can now cast pretty much every chant you want remnants count as chance so you can pay nothing for a remnant and get the ability off 
and there's nothing your opponent can do about it. You can have, you know, I mean, I guess they can try and counter it off, and then all you did is lose nothing because you didn't pay anything for it. And it works, people forget, it works on per turn. So on your opponent's turn, you can remnant something, and it costs nothing. You can cast a, uh, a seal of wind of light, and it costs you nothing. You can cast any chant you want, and it costs you zero every single time they don't have addition hate this is where it starts getting bad because of a spell called well not spell chant that we're going to put in later that i'm going to talk about later called rising from the depths because what that can do combined with this you can just hard cast everything you want uh and this is your zordon this is your base this is your your fortress of solitude that, that gives you your your rangers all their power and they can just destroy everything because now they have the power of chance every turn for whatever amounts of time it's easy it's fun it hurts the opponent there's nothing they can do about it that's why i do it um and that's like your main deck so this is this is what my main deck was this is how it pretty much works out um along with that you know every power ranger has to have a sword so i had an excalibur and a leviathan because or levitating whatever you say because you need a red ranger sword or the, the 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 other ranger sword white ranger sword uh one because they both give imperishable so just in case i'm worried about you black moon beaming i'm gonna basically force you to keep two will open so you can't do it on your turn so you have to do it on my turn and then i still keep my charlotte and i still get all my draw and stuff and you have to purposely do it or not play things and that works out much 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 better i tell you what you can even use your imperishable before your ruler comes up and people keep forgetting this uh if you feel like they're going to do a black moon beam to you use your imperishable your ruler has um has it so when they pop out they either have to black moon beam you right then and if you have swiftness you're getting your attack in they can't stop you and they have to kill you then you pop back in it's perfectly fine and they use their black moon beam for whatever time they're gonna do it's fine it works out go over the magic stones every deck needs magic stones and this deck actually has 20 magic stones i do this twice um so it has 20 magic stones because there might be a situation where they do indeed take out your charlotte which is very very sad but just like angel grove you want to try a little harder at, at just having a general basis to still defeat them even after they kill your main power ranger you have all the rest of your your characters to destroy resonators to destroy them so what it normally turns into is that i have three light magic stones three wind magic stones three um water magic stones and then i have three light vapors uh, magic stone of light vapors i have two magic stones of dark depths i have uh, two magic stones of deep woods one magic stone of gusting skies I should probably put more you can adjust for that and then last but not least I have, have three magic stones of Hearth's core and with that that's 20 stones and with that you, you can get the simple stones with magic stone analysis and you can get anything else by drawing you'll be able to play something all right so we're gonna just go to the side deck the side deck is a little little interesting because i uh i i i wanted to have certain things in there you notice there was certain certain thing that was very very missing that's the megazord and now uh, for our megazord we have uh, mary bell the insane self-aware robot that's our megazord and just like just like the megazord it gets more powerful based off of what you tap and place into there and it also gets all the the regular skills and abilities that 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 thing has so it's just it, it, you pay one and then for every one you tap she gets bigger and bigger and stronger now remember the whole combination with the force you can now use cars that aren't going to actually attack buff them all up because they're humans or fairy tales tap them and then your megazord comes in possibly way over like 10,000 damage and she has pierce so if anything blocks it it dies <laughs> There's nothing they can do about it. It's just damage. Just make a sword ender. <sighs> Dead. So great. I love the combination. That's your Megazord. Uh, we have our special ranger, which is Lumia and a girl uh, in the frozen casket. I have two of her. I have two of the. This is the sideboard. I have two of the uh, Lumias and I have two of the uh, Marybells. Um, what that does is she has the ability to tap 
And when she flips over after you pay her shift costs, either by tapping resonators or tapping uh, stones, she flips over and she gives you back 4,000 health. So it's just like that time when the rangers are all on the ground. They're like, oh, I'm hurting. Now they can suddenly get stronger. They go back to where they, their, their powerful forms. They get their suits on. And then she also gives you a chant back, which you can use to either get your lightning strikes or heartfelt fires. You can use to get um any of your magic stone analysis if you need that you can use it to pretty much get anything that you just played back to your hand and then since chance cost zero because you have zordon out also known as altea you can then play it for free it's so awesome she basically sets you back uh she's also a human so she does get pumped by the, the force ability and since she's a human she can actually swing she's a thousand thousand she's pretty strong um and you can always just send her back to your hand with your charlotte and then do it again so you have a guarantee i'm not going to die anytime soon ability along with that we have four zeros magic light and the reason we have four zeros magic light is because in our side deck we have the white ranger who is zeros <laughs> And Zero is there specifically to be able to change up and not feel any real downside for changing up, especially if you're going to go against aggro deck. It just stops aggro decks from having swiftness flying and all that stuff. And with the combination of all those force abilities, Red Boy and all of them, it makes it where you can pop early to stop them from getting their abilities off because there's not really much black, but you can get some black. Or you can not wait a second and then pop knowing that your opponent can't stop you when you dreams of flight your opponent can't have swiftness so they're not going to smack you hard and all the other abilities are just gone so they just have to basically kill you and once you get your familiar out it also pops your familiar to be stronger than it's supposed to normally be which you can also make stronger with your base ability thus you're safe um i then have uh the rising from the depths which is a four cost which makes it where it clears the entire field there's a field wipe for blue and it also makes it where if you pay the awakening cost which costs six more which with the combination of altea you can just pay the awakening cost base and not have to pay anything for the the base cost it allows you to put three water resonators in after you clear the field so you can have charlotte out clear the field throw three water resonators out like you know hook or whatever it doesn't really matter and then go ahead and just smash because there's nothing they can do about it there's nothing on their field and just just crush them out right um that's a field wipe and of course we also have four seals of wind of night I, I have four in there because those are your counters and it's pretty much all your counters and if you want to stop them from doing anything especially with altea out uh, it gives you free reign to just stop that one or two things that'll, that'll make your life difficult or that their main combos are built on. Like if, of course, you see a Mercurius and you're like, nope, Mercurius is gone. Nope, that's gone. And you're, then you're fine. You're good. You're like, I can do this. I can, I can kill him off now. Now, alternatively, there are other cards you can put in there. You can, instead of having, you know, Lumia or in having Mary Bell, you can instead put in eternal recurrence because it toss two black and with a combination of melfies or anything like that you have another board wipe on your side we don't have a black ranger but if you wanted to add a black ranger uh you could there's several choices but that's all for you whatever you want to do uh, i hope you all enjoyed this it was a really fun deck and i'm have more deck builds that you like if you like comment subscribe and like down here and i'll do what i can for you interesting abilities and interesting decks are what makes the game fun i hope you all enjoyed your time here and may the zen be with you things first is our ruler which is sun wukong sun wukong well um it was the monkey king born from style who flips into sun wukong he has